NASA just confirmed something no one expected. A second wave of signals from the Andromeda galaxy has reached Earth, and it's stronger than the first. The data came through at 3.47 a.m. Eastern Time. Radio telescopes across three continents lit up simultaneously. The signal spiked so hard, it temporarily overwhelmed receiver arrays at the Chime Observatory in Canada. This wasn't background noise. This wasn't a glitch. The spectrogram showed a distinct pattern, a repeating pulse. The same frequency signature detected 18 months ago, but this time the intensity measured 50 times higher. Andromeda sits 2.5 million light years away. That means whatever created this signal happened 2.5 million years ago. And now a second burst has arrived. Scientists at NASA's Deep Space Network scrambled to cross-reference the data. Within hours, telescopes in New Mexico and Australia confirmed it. The pattern matched. The timing was impossible to ignore. For the first time since they began scanning the cosmos in 1960, automated AI systems flagged something they couldn't classify. Not a pulsar, not a magnetar, not anything in their database. The question burning through every observatory right now, if this is wave two, what comes next? The first wave arrived 18 months ago, in January 2024. Radio telescopes picked up a brief flash from Andromeda's direction, milliseconds of radio energy. Bright, yes, but not unprecedented. Astronomers catalogued it as FRB24017, just another fast radio burst, the kind Chime detects dozens of times per year. Most come from distant galaxies billions of light years away. This one was closer, much closer, but it was a single event. No follow up, no repeat. The scientific consensus, probably a magnetar, a hypermagnetized neutron star undergoing a violent crustal shift. Strange, but explainable. The data got filed, published in a brief journal note. Life moved on. Then the second wave hit. Mission control at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory wasn't just curious this time. They called an emergency briefing. Radio astronomers from CHIME, the Deep Space Network and the Very Large Array were patched in within the hour. Every major observatory on Earth was looped into the same conference line, because this wasn't a repeat in the usual sense. The signal came from the exact same point in Andromeda, same galactic coordinates, but the structure was different, more complex, more organized. NASA's deep space network dishes swiveled to lock onto the source. The massive 70-meter antenna in Goldstone, California, captured every photon. The signal persisted for three full seconds, an eternity in radio astronomy. And when the data streamed through, every scientist in that room saw the same thing. It wasn't just noise anymore. It looked patterned. NASA deployed their newest AI analysis system, the same neural network architecture Google DeepMind developed for protein folding, retrained to hunt for patterns in cosmic radio data. The AI flagged something within minutes, repeating polarization changes. Radio waves vibrate in specific orientations, like light passing through polarized sunglasses. Natural sources like pulsars show random or slowly rotating polarization. It's chaotic messy. This signal flipped its polarization angle in a rhythmic pattern, Every 200 milliseconds, the orientation shifted, then shifted back, then shifted again at precise intervals. This isn't how a natural fast radio burst should behave. Magneto eruptions produce chaotic magnetic fields. Supernova remnants scatter polarization randomly. Even the most exotic astrophysical objects show noise in their structure. But this signal showed order. Dr. Emily Chen at the SETI Institute ran the numbers through every known natural mechanism plasma lensing, quantum vacuum effects, relativistic beaming. None of them matched. The pattern was too clean, too regular. Is this physics we don't understand? Some undiscovered property of intergalactic space? Or something else? What followed wasn't just a signal. It shook Earth's own magnetic shield. At 3.51 a.m., four minutes after the signal arrived, something else happened. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center detected a sudden spike in Earth's magnetosphere. The magnetic field that shields our planet from solar radiation flickered just for eight seconds, but the disturbance was measurable across every monitoring station from Alaska to Antarctica. Ground magnetometers recorded the anomaly. Satellites in geosynchronous orbit logged the compression. The magnetosphere's dayside boundary pushed inward by nearly 2,000 km, then snapped back. NASA's first assumption was obvious. 
solar flare. The sun routinely bombards Earth with charged particles. When a coronal mass ejection hits our magnetic shield, it causes exactly this kind of disturbance. Except the Solar Dynamics Observatory showed nothing. No flares, no plasma eruptions. The sun was in a quiet phase. Solar wind measurements were completely normal. For a moment, global monitoring stations thought a solar storm had hit. Technicians scrambled to find the source. They checked every satellite feed, every ground station, every space weather instrument in orbit. Nothing from the sun, nothing from near-Earth space. The only electromagnetic event detected in that four-minute window was the radio burst from Andromeda. This is terrifying because it shouldn't be possible. Radio waves don't push magnetic fields. They pass through them like light through glass. A distant radio signal shouldn't interact with Earth's magnetosphere at all. Yet the timing was undeniable. Signal arrival at 347, magnetospheric disturbance at 351 for minutes. The exact time it would take for a secondary particle wave, traveling at near light speed to cross the distance from outer atmosphere to magnetosphere. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center pulled archived data. They found the same signature 18 months ago, a tiny magnetospheric blip recorded at 4.13 a.m. on the 17th of January 2024, eight minutes after the first Andromeda signal. No one had connected them before. It seemed too subtle, too impossible. This is why NASA rushed into briefing mode. A second wave from Andromeda appeared to interact with Earth itself. Not through gravitational force, not through radiation pressure, but through some mechanism that defies standard astrophysics. Radio astronomers did the math. If the source truly originated in Andromeda's core, the numbers were staggering. The signal measured at 140 Janskys at Earth's surface. For reference, the brightest fast radio burst ever recorded was FRB 2020612A. It peaked at three Janskys from a galaxy over one billion light years away. This signal was 50 times brighter, from 50 times closer. Apply the inverse square law and the implications become clear. Brightness falls with the square of distance. If you move twice as close, something appears four times brighter. 50 times closer means 2500 times the apparent intensity. The source energy required is almost incomprehensible. Scientists calculated the burst released more radio energy in three seconds than our entire sun emits across all wavelengths in a full hour. Imagine a flashlight so powerful that even from the moon it could outshine the sun for a blink of an eye. That's the scale we're talking about. Dr. Vikram Patel at MIT's Kavli Institute ran the calculations three times. He thought his software had glitched. It hadn't. The brightness was real. Only two known objects in the universe produce bursts this energetic. Colliding neutron stars and hyperflaring magnetars. Both are rare, both are violent. Both happen exactly once at a specific location. This happened twice, same spot, 18 months apart. The energy output doesn't fit any existing model. Magnetars don't store enough magnetic energy for a second eruption of this magnitude. Neutron star collisions can't repeat. They destroy themselves in the merger. Whatever created this signal has an energy budget that makes astrophysicists uncomfortable. It's not impossible, but it requires physics we haven't observed before.